So I had my whole day planned and it was going to be pretty much a typical type of video, interesting stuff uh, that was happening. I had a nice little article here about there was a uh, guest, uh, Joe Rogan, Adam Curry to be specific, and he just talked about how Bitcoin is, uh, you know, everybody's going to need to own at least one Bitcoin or you're going to need to own at least one Bitcoin for the apocalypse, which is ridiculous because there's only 21 million. So good luck with that. I think he's just talking about fractions of Bitcoin. So it was an interesting one. I'll let every other YouTuber talk about that today. Also, there was a story about IRS doubling down, uh, investing another quarter million dollars into tracking crypto transactions. So if in the U.S. and don't think about paying or talking about your cryptocurrency uh, holdings, the IRS, get ready. And also there was something, you know, good story about Bitcoin's correlation with gold hits a record high. And they're all fantastic stuff, but really it just comes down to the root, the base. And the base of what is going on is that there is just economic turmoil throughout the whole global community. And like I talked about with the pandemic, with the COVID-19, whether you believe it in or not, uh, which I think is ridiculous if you don't, you have to look at what is going on with businesses, the GDP, and the whole global economy in general. And we, if we take a look at that, the uncertainty with the presidential election that's going to happen in two months, on top of what Jim Rogers here is talking about, which is the potentially the end of the dollar dominance as U.S. China tensions escalate. There is just a lot of problems uh, throughout the world. I think we can all agree on that one subject. But there is one positive, which, I mean, if you look at it as a positive, it is what it is. The uncertainty that you have in the economic forum is what is going to drive Bitcoin, digital assets, cryptocurrency, and even blockchain in general, uh, to new highs. So the more that we see this uncertainty, the more we're going to see uh, Bitcoin go up, gold go up, because they are a hedge against the traditional market. So this article really is to the crux of what is going on. So what's happening? Let's jump right in. So Jim Rogers, who is this guy? Well, he co-founded the Quantum Fund in 1973 with billionaire investor George Soros, which was considered one of the most successful hedge funds in its heyday. If you are in any kind of political circles, you know the name George Soros, so I'm not going to delve into that. Firstly, Rogers explained that the U.S. is now the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, and it's getting higher and higher every day. I didn't, I didn't mark this part, but it's, it's something to note. The U.S. national debt is currently more than $26.7 trillion. That's trillion with a T. And this guy says traditionally the U.S. dollar has been the soundest currency in the world, but tradition changes. The U.S. dollar is coming to its century or so of dominance, and something else will replace it. The only constant thing is change. There is no way the U.S. dollar can stay on top and be the world reserve currency for a millennia. It just does not going to happen. Uh, moving forward, I can only see the dominance of the dollar uh, going uh, decreasing, just like the buying power or purchasing power of the dollar uh, going down uh, because of the inflation and all this quantitative easing. You cannot print this much money and have no repercussions. It just doesn't work like that. The investment guru pointed to the examples of the British pound and Dutch gilder, which if you're sitting there going, uh, what's the Dutch gilder or, you know, British pound? Is that so much of a big thing in the global economy? Well, here's the thing. It was just like in a hundred years, people are going to be like, well, remember the U.S. dollar that used to be big and now it's not. Moving on, knowing that both were previously considered the most reliable currencies. Meanwhile, the world's second largest American debt holder, China, is planning to cut its U.S. debt holdings as tensions with Washington escalate. And this is not just on top of China. This is also Russia. And we covered this story a couple of weeks ago where we had talked about the different uh, economic powerhouses, you know, China and Russia being one of them, how they are trying to kind of squeeze out the U.S. dollar, which is in their best interest. And I talked about I don't see why they hadn't done that previously before, because if you love sanctions and you're, and you're a country, well, then just keep using the U.S dollar. And uh, that's what's going to happen. But uh, here you see that uh, Russia is ditching, ditching the dollar for bulk was export to China. And in this article, in the next sentence, it, says, it states experts in Beijing expect China to reduce its U.S. debt holdings by 20% from 1 trillion to 800 billion, which if you think about it, it's like, well, you know, it's 800 billion. That's a lot of money, 1 trillion, but 20%. That's a huge amount. The paper further warns that it could even sell all of its U.S. bonds in an extreme case like a military conflict. So let's just play devil's advocate. Let's just say for one second that China goes, you know what? We're calling all our debts, so pay it back. America's like, well, sorry, we're going to default. So what do you think is going to happen as far as the tensions go with that route? I can only see economic uncertainty, which again is only great 
for cryptocurrency digital assets. Finishing up, Rogers emphasized that China reducing American debt will put pressure on U.S. interest rates, adding that they should be going up. It's a smart economic and investment move, one that would strengthen the Chinese yuan, which he noted has already been happening for several weeks. And he states, if they sell U.S. debt, they sell dollars, therefore their currency goes higher. And why wouldn't you do that if you're China? Sell all the debt, get rid of the American dollar, move to the yuan, especially the digital yuan, which is the CBDC, which is what they're trialing right now. Why wouldn't they do it and move forward to becoming even a more economic powerhouse? It only makes sense to me. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and let's move on. So before we get into Q of the day, I did a poor job of uh, introducing Alex here. Uh, he is the CEO of Celsius, and there was three specific questions. We'll get into that in a little, a little bit, but the reason why Alex has credibility with me and with what he is doing is because of what he's already done. So real quick, this is from the Celsius.network website. Here's Alex's bio, and it's just a very quick snippet, so I'll put out the actual great stuff. So to begin, Alex is one of the inventors of VOIP, or Voice Over Internet Protocol. So all the different Zoom applications, everything that you're listening to right now, the Voice Over Internet Protocol, this is the guy that created it. He had a foundational patent back in 94, now working on MOIP, Money Over Internet Protocol. And this is the same guy that says cryptocurrency, digital assets, essentially are going to swallow up the internet. So why he has credibility with me is what he's already done. Besides that, he's a serial entrepreneur, founder of seven New York City-based startups. He's raised more than a billion and exited over three. Alex founded two of New York City's top 10 venture-backed exits since 2000. One of his first companies, Air Bennett, IPO'd in 2004 with a market cap of $750 million. Another venture, Transit Wireless, which valued at $1.2 billion at time of exit. So this is a guy who has already done all the things. And I have talked about this in previous videos where I, I talk about what will you do when money really isn't an object? If you don't really need money, so what do you do? So this is a prime example. I don't think Alex is out there going, you know what, I really hope I can make my mortgage payment or I can really hope I can make, you know, uh, pay for my apartment, which is what a lot of people out there are doing right now, I must add. It's not that he has that. He is one of those guys who is just like, you know what, I think I can make things better. I think I can improve things. And this is why he has Celsius. And this is why I was excited to get him into the uh, office and just ask him some questions. So let's jump into the office right now.